Hi, this is Jim Gibson. Thank you for joining me today on my channel. Really appreciate it. <laughs> and I was going through the comment section of the YouTube account, and I noticed that a lot of people had the same question, or there was a handful of people had the same question. And that was, how do you find customers? And so I thought I would do a video on it, because there's no way I could answer that in comments. It would take, <laughs> it's going to take a chapter in a book to answer that question. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through some of the things here, and it applies to everyone that's in business or thinking about starting a business. However, the advanced stuff for finding customers, the things that I used when I was in business, I'm going to share with you and tell you how successful they were or some of the ones I struggled with. So just a little bit of background. I've been in IT since 1979. I started a business in the late 80s, early 90s. And we grew to a national business, installed systems all over the United States, every state, every year, and some states multiple times. And it was very profitable. I sold the business a few years back. Actually, I sold my database. A business is not worth much. It's the customers that, are, that add value. So today we're going to talk about how to find customers. And I'm going to work through the whole scenario. I'm going to start for those people who may not have a business at all and how to find customers, the first customer. And then I'm going to talk at the end some advanced tactics that I used. Your success in business always starts before you start the business. There's two things you have to figure out that are absolutely positively important. And the first thing is, who's going to be your customer? And what problem do they have that you're going to solve? They're the two questions you have to ask yourself. You have to be precise. Now, it can change in the future. Your customers can expand, different type of customers, things like that, different type of problems. But if you're going to start a business, you should at least have a clear thought in your mind of what problems you want to solve and who are going to be your customers. Customers are the keys. I think I told you a story about a, someone I know that a venture capitalist, small venture capitalist, gave him a couple hundred thousand dollars to start a business. And the first thing he did is he went out and bought trucks. And then he signed the lease for five years in a warehouse. And he filled his warehouse with all sorts of goodies and stuff. And then, of course, him and the uh, prospective employees that he hired, they all uh, uh, had a uh, time in uh, Las Vegas before they came back and stared at each other and said, now what do we do? <laughs> sometimes when you have too much money, it's a hindrance. I know that's hard to believe, isn't it? But sometimes the best way to start a business is with no resources because then it gets you to think and to wonder, how can I do this? How can I solve this problem? Things like that. And that's how I started my business with Nova Voice and Data Systems many, many years ago, decades ago. Very successful. Always in the black. Always profitable to the very last day. Before you start the business, you've got to have in your mind at least a starting customer. Who is that starting customer you're going to start with? What's that group of customers that you want to start with? Is it going to be, we're talking about IT, so is it going to be residential or is it going to be commercial? Or is it going to be a mixture of both? What, how are you going to solve their problems? What are their problems? And therefore, what are your opportunities in that area? And so that's the very first thing you got to do is uh, figure out who your customers are going to be and figure out the problems that they have that you can address and solve for them. But after that, the first, the next thing you need to do is you need to come up with a name for your business. Now, in my opinion, don't come up with goofy names, okay? Uh, you may think it's funny, you may think it's cute, things like that. I had a friend that named his business and I couldn't pronounce it and it was just weird. Okay, and I couldn't spell it. That's the worst name you could possibly think. Now, for years, when I first got out of the Marine Corps, I worked for a fantastic company called CNR Systems, and uh, that was based on the people's names. And I would advise you not uh, to do something that starts with your name or the area. There's, uh, you know, companies that say West Coast this or things like that. That's not a good name because if you're ever going to expand, it's going to be strange to have a name that only deals with the area that you live in or deals with your name. That's my opinion. But come up with a name. Hopefully it's short. I'm looking at the camera right now that I'm talking at, and it says Sony. 
It's, it's only four letters, man. It's really easy. And everybody knows the name, everybody knows what they do, everybody knows the brand, and that's what you're looking for. Now, you also have Google, which is a made-up name, Google, but it's a great name. You also have Amazon, that's great. So if your name can describe your service or product, that's even better yet. My channel, CableSupply.com, describes what I do, and that's a really great name. It's easy to spell, it's easy to remember, it's a great name. So that's the first thing. Now, just because you come up with a name doesn't mean you can use it, okay? You don't want to play games here, by the way. You don't want a name that's similar to somebody else's name that's popular and successful. You want your own name, okay? Because you're going to build a brand. So you have to start out with that name that's going to, it's going to be important that you have that name, and that's you, okay? And that's going to be your company. So when I started my company, Noah Voice and Data System, which, by the way, owns cablesupply.com. That's the parent company for cable supply. But when I started NOAA Voice and Data Systems many years ago, my thoughts was is that I am going to go national. Even before I had my first customer, my design was to go national. So that's why I started with the name NOAA Voice and Data Systems uh, that really um, didn't limit me. Now, would I have done it differently? Well, yeah, I think today would check first for a good URL. But one of the mistakes I made and one of the things that you needed to check um, uh, whether the name uh, Nova URL was reserved on the internet. It wasn't, so I had a really crazy URL internet name, enova.us, and that is not a good <laughs> URL. <laughs> but back then, the internet was just getting started. I didn't know about URL names. A name that you could use on the internet easily was not that big of a deal. But it is today. It's a big deal, especially now. You want to come up with a name now. It doesn't mean that other people aren't going to have similar names, and that's possible. It's called competition. So you're going to have to distinguish yourself, and your name hopefully will help you. So pick a good name, okay? Uh, the next, maybe you can come up with a logo, and you can get your YouTube account like I have. I have a couple YouTube channels. Maybe you can come up with a YouTube channel that very few other people are using the same name or similar name you got to distinguish yourself from other people. But register your URL with GoDaddy that can give you that name, and it should be a .com. If you can't get a .com, go find another name, okay? Because that's not going to work for you. you got to have the .com name. Once you get your logo and once you got your .com name for your website, build a website. Even if it's a simple, like three pages long, build a website. Uh, and put all your contact information on that website. Now, some of this is really simple stuff, okay? We're going to get to how to get a customer. But you got to do these things before you even talk to a potential customer. So get your website, and then get business cards made up with your company name, your company logo, and any certifications that you have, and also a phone number that they could reach you. Now, you can use Google phone numbers, things like that. They're usually pretty good. Or you can just go regular phone number. <laughs> I think Google's better, by the way, on their phone numbers. Do something like that. And you got a phone number, you got an address, you got everything. You're incorporated. You're, you got a YouTube account. You got a Facebook account. You have social media accounts and things like that. I have a social media person. He, he's an expert on it. He, he's going to probably edit this uh, video. Not probably, he will edit this video. After I'm done with it, I'll send it to him. He will take it over at that point and edit the video. So you need all those things. Now, what product are you going to offer or what service are you going to offer? You're going to need to know that and it's going to have to be detailed. You need to be the expert in that product or that service. So if you're thinking of, let's say, if you're in IT and you're thinking of doing cabling, then you should be an expert in that area. Now, one of the things that I did when I was first starting out, because I knew customers had a, a problem putting their head around the cost of cabling a building. So I came up with a standard cost, and you're going to laugh at this price, okay? But it was profitable back then. It's, <laughs> it's bucket change today. It was $35 a jack and plus patch panel. So I would charge them for whatever size patch panel they wanted, but it was $35 a jack. So if they needed 10 jacks in their suite, that costs $350 plus a patch panel. It's easy for the customer who knows nothing about technology 
to grasp that information and to be comfortable with it. You're going to need some documents also. You're going to need uh, sales agreements, things like that, work orders and invoices. And I actually have been working on a book on how to start a business and I'm going to have examples in that book of why you have to do it a certain way, things like that. Um, you got to do all these preliminaries because you don't want to offer your service to someone and then have them say, oh, well, what does it cost? And you don't know. <laughs> you got to figure it out. But $35 back then was fantastic because jacks were costing about a buck, 80 cents, something like that. Very inexpensive, under a dollar. And the cable was probably five to 10 cents a foot. I just averaged what the average length would be on the cable and the average and my cost of the jack and I figured it would take me about an hour per location so I knew what my labor was. Yeah, it was dirt poor, dirt cheap. <laughs> Not dirt poor, I was dirt poor back then. But it was dirt cheap. And my goal wasn't that I wanted to make a profit today. My goal was I wanted to get customers, reoccurring customers and so I could build a base and then I would ra start raising my price slowly. So there are the things you need to, get, to do first. The next thing is after you set up all your websites, after you do all this, after you have business cards and things like that, don't go overboard on this too. You don't need the most expensive business card. You just need a business card. Now another thing you need to do is you're going to go, I'm going to recommend that you go to certain events, certain places, things like that you're going to need to look professional. So you're going to need either a suit and tie or you're going to need a sports coat or you're going to need a, a three button like I have one right now, something like that with dockers, something that says you're professional. You don't want to look like you're Joe the bum down the street that's begging for money. You want to look at the, as the point where someone is going to hand you money to do a job or going to sign off on a job that they're really confident or fairly confident that, that you're actually going to get the job done in a professional way. That's a technical thing. That's going to be a little different. But in this case, you want to look professional because what I think you should do is you need to go to certain events. And this is how you build customers. This is how you get the customers that you need uh, to start your business. So the first thing I would do is I would start going to some events and telling people what you do. Don't be bashful in this. It's kind of interesting. I've been involved in politics for oh, decades now, and when I was newly involved in politics, one of the challenges my wife would uh, give me was when I go to a political event, and there might be three or 400 people, she would challenge me to see how many business cards I could pick up by the end of the day. Now, there's other things today besides business cards. There's a thing where you take your cell phone and you tap it and, and they get the, your business card, you get theirs. But you want to collect business cards and you want to make sure you give them out. And it was a game for me with my wife. Every time I went to an event, I'd be in really dressed up. Some of them were black tie events and things like that. And I'd be giving out my business card. I'd be trying to get rid of them. I don't want to hoard these things. They're no good in my pocket, so I want to get them out. And at the same time, she was challenging me to get so many business cards within an hour. So I would just worked the room and I learned how to work rooms. And that was pretty good training because of being in politics and all. But you want to go to events. Now, some of the events you want to go to might be small too, might be low keyed, but you still want to look professional. You want to look a notch above your competitors. And so think about churches. If you go to a church or a synagogue, there are going to be people who have a natural trust on for you that you're going to get the job done because, hey, you go to their church or you go to their synagogue. Think of it that way, that there is an opportunity. When you go to church, you should have your business cards with you all the time. I, I was The other day I was looking, I need a gate, a wrought iron gate that is lockable, right? And I'm walking in this area here in California and this company is putting up wrought iron gates and he has his he has his a blowtorch and everything else he's welding it or whatever he's doing he's attaching the gate to this post he put in and I said oh you do gates he said yeah and I said you have a business card he goes oh, we don't mess with business cards uh, you got my name you know what my name is look, look me up <laughs> well I never looked him up I forgot about it and I don't know who he is and I still need the gate so make sure you have business cards and, co and material you can hand out. Uh, chamber of Commerce. I mean, come on, you got a Chamber of Commerce in your city? Uh, go check them out. Uh, sometimes you can go to events and things like that, and you don't have to join. 
but I would join. I go to a couple different chambers in my area, different cities and stuff like that, and I meet people and I, I make sure I talk to them and I make sure they're, you know, I get to know them and I get to see them two or three times. When some sees you two or three times, they know you're in business in the area, then all of a sudden they have a, a job or a need uh, for you, then they think about you first. And of course, you've given them three or four business cards already. Uh, so you want to do that. Golf, if you're a golfer, you can meet people there, business people there. Mine was always business to business. It was rarely ever residential uh, work. I did not like residential work. It's different when it comes to IT and cabling and stuff like that. So I really didn't care for residential work. Other people like it. I, as I said in one of the other videos, this guy does fantastic work and he makes a ton of money doing residential. So I'm not trying to put it down. Next is flyers. You just show up sometimes at businesses with a flyer. Nicely done flyer. Professional looking. Not something written by your kids. I just remember there was a, a person that I knew and I'd call up and they would have their kid on their voicemail. Hi, this is, my, I'm Bob. This is Johnny's boy. Sorry, he's not available. Come on, man. That's not professional. You're wasting people's time. They got to wait till you shut up so you can leave a voicemail. And this is stupid, okay? So don't do stupid things. Flyers. You can do flyers, especially if you're doing homes. And that's a niche now. Uh, the friend that I told you about that does this niche, he only deals with people whose homes are worth like $5 million or more. Because you got, what is a customer? He who pays. So if you don't have the money to buy that high-end, uh, low-voltage system, I'm thinking entertainment centers, things like that, or cameras, things like that. Uh, if, if the customer has money, you're, gonna, you're most likely going to get paid and they're not going to play games with you. So that's his niche was wealthy uh, homeowners. Mine was never been homeowners. So you want to go to these events, things like that. You want to get involved. The community should know you. Now I'm going to start talking about some of the things that I did that was an advanced uh, type of uh, customer search. <laughs> marketing it's called um one of the things that i did was radio i used to do radio all the time uh, there's two things i did on radio i would do a commercial on radio now radio is not as popular as it used to be so maybe you're looking at google ads and things like that i've never had great success for google, of google ads years ago i just found that they were not uh, cost effective for me now maybe i just need to learn to do them better but I, I, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, radio was more popular than it is today. And so I would do a lot of radio commercials, and I would also be interviewed by the uh, business section uh, of the, uh, the broadcast company. So you'd have talk shows sometimes, and they would have, oh, this business owner is going to come in. So you need to get to know these people. It's easy. You just call them up, and you say, hey, I'm interested in doing a, a show or, or working with you on on this subject matter and I could really help you. There, I always found out people are looking for content. Some of these hosts are always looking for content. Some of these uh, people on the, on the radio or on YouTube or things like that, they're desperate for content. So if you call them up and say, hey, would you mind interviewing me on your channel? A lot of people will say, yeah, let's do it, man. Because if it's a compliment, if it helps them and it helps you, then it's, it's worthwhile for you to do that. Uh, sponsor events. So this is a little bit later. This is like I said, he, it's uh, advanced uh, marketing uh, for a new business. But sponsor events. But but make sure, I mean, you, you, they got to know that you sponsored the event. So your name, let's say if you're going to do a half marathon or something, your name needs to be on that t-shirt in the back. And that people keep those t-shirts forever. So your name and what you do and your contact information needs to be there. So like with cable supply, it's all your IT needs at wholesale prices. So you got a little tagline like that. And cablesupply.com, all, all your IT needs at wholesale prices. People remember that. And uh, since it's a .com, that's my contact information. That's how you get a hold of me. But you can also put your phone number there. And these t-shirts you get sometimes that you, that you get printed and things like that, uh, very inexpensive. <laughs> I've printed thousands of t-shirts. And you can give away. Uh, you can give them away to friends, to relatives, to little kids sometimes. Just give them away. 
And uh, if you sponsor an event, you'll see your shirt being worn uh, during the sponsorship. Uh, just think it through because it could be a waste of time to what you're sponsoring and, and do you really want to be associated with that company. So think it through. And, uh, but at the same time, these are great events. You can sponsor a lot of events, all different types, golfing, um, things like that, races, whatever. Think of it through. Um, the next thing is banners. Um, so once you start to get a job, let's say you're at a construction site and you're cabling a building, why not get a 20-foot banner by 10-foot high and put it right there on the chain link fence outside where you're doing where it would say something like, the name of your business is doing low voltage cabling on this building. Here's our contact information. This is a great thing. We've done that a number of times. And the banner is more than paid for itself within, uh, I would say, one or two uh, months. We were out there for a while. Banner's always there. Of course, when you're talking about your vehicles, um, especially service vehicles, I, don't, I wouldn't do this to your home own vehicle and stay away from the magnetic signs they always come across as cheesy and unprofessional but if you do a wrap on your um, on your technicians trucks things like that do that another thing is I'd get stickers and when I put up equipment uh, for someone I would put that sticker uh, right there on the equipment that we installed that system our name our logo stuff like that so you want to do things like that also, what you want to do is you want to go support non-competitors that are in the same market. So like for me, um, I made friends with Microsoft uh, dealers. I'm not a Microsoft dealer. I don't, it just, that's never interests me. I'm, I've always been uh, Cisco. I've always been cybersecurity. I've always been network design and stuff, but I don't want to install software or maintain the software or change passwords or things like that. So I always had like-minded people that were not competitors. And in fact, I picked them out pretty early on. I would go to them and I would go to the small Microsoft dealer. I'd go in there and I'd introduce myself. I'd give them my business card. I'd say, I can do your cabling and I'll do it at wholesale. And I'll do it at such a price that you can charge your customers uh, uh, a different price, a higher price, because you should benefit from that because you've given me the work. And so if I charge $200 for a drop, you can charge $300. And I would walk them through that to show what advantage is to them. That's the point of this, is it has to be a, has to be a win-win situation, to use that often used and worn out term. It has to be a win-win situation. You have to help them be profitable while they help you to be profitable and it helps the customer the end customer but remember your customer is not that if you have this type of relationship your customer is not where you're doing the install your customer is a person that gives you the check so don't ever forget that you work for the person that gives you the check that's your customer so your microsoft dealer um, that's your customer um, your cisco dealer that's your customer your company that's asking you to install in a certain area, that's your customer. Whoever gives you a check, that's the person you're supposed to please. And you're supposed to do it that way. Now, when you start to get leads, you need to track all these leads. And that can be done pretty simple. Just a piece of paper that you get copies of or anything else. Or you can just do it on a uh, software program. When someone calls in and they have, you know, they say, well, you know, I want to give you this lead. A friend of mine is uh, moving and he needs a new uh, system installed. Well, you want to write all that down. And then if you get that sale, and maybe if you don't get the sale, you know, send something to that person who gave you that lead. Send something that would be of interest to that person. When Sometimes we had um, females uh, that were uh, working in the IT department of a big corporation we would send them a bunch of flowers or a bunch of candy and tell them how much we appreciate the lead. It was nothing more than that. I'm not trying to do anything else except that, just to say thank you. And uh, they seemed to like that, the candy and the flowers, things like that. Uh, receptionists, always, always, always respect receptionists. They're the doorkeepers. They're the people that are going to let you get in and see the CEO or the president of the company. 
So always treat them with respect. One of the things I used to do is I would have this little glass container, really nice glass container, and I put my, I would uh, get it labeled on the outside, the name of my business and what we did. It would be etched in on the glass, the clear glass, and I'd fill it with jelly bellies, and I would give it to the receptionist, and I would tell her, anytime you call and I'll have someone out here to refill it for you for free, and eat as many as you want for yourself. Um, and then people would come into the office and they would see the name. Remember, they want, you want to have a logo that they recognize and a name that's easy to remember. So that a lot of people coming through an office, especially if they are also a business-to-business -business type of company, then you want that logo there all the time. You want to be known. <laughs> uh, your logo, your name of your company should be all over the place, should be known by everyone and you should be the go-to person concerning your products. So you got to keep track of these leads. One other thing, I used to have a bunch of lawyers that I worked for, and they're really nice guys, and I really like them. you, you got to learn to like your customers, even if they're aggravating sometimes, because they're the people that put the food on your table at night. And they're the people that pay your house payment and, and pay your car payment and keep your business alive. So... Um, I had a bunch of these lawyers that were friends, that were business associates, things like that. Um, and I came across this book uh, that was how to, uh, how to generate leads for um, lawyers, <laughs> how they could generate leads. And so I bought the book and sent it to each of them. Never asked them for anything, by the way. They never asked for the book. I just found it so interesting in my business, and I knew these lawyers that I was dealing with were business lawyers. I just thought this would help them. So you want to look for ways you can help people, not just because you're going to get something back in return. Don't expect that. And don't act like you deserve something back in return. You're just trying to help other people. And uh, what I found out is you give to get. So you give first before you get, okay? So you want to help them. So when you help them, they'll remember you. And hopefully, if they're decent people, when they see an opportunity for you, they will give you a referral. So I've given you a lot of information. I just think that if you work hard at this, it's hard work at the beginning. Once you get a base that can support your business, then you can even build further than that. And uh, that's what I always worked on. Now, I almost forgot. I need a uh, thumbs up and I need um, subscriptions. So if you want to subscribe, that would be fantastic. Please subscribe and because I'm going to produce a lot of videos like this in the future. And if you want to be reminded that I'm producing these type of videos, then please subscribe. And thank you for sticking in there till the end. And I hope you have a wonderful day and go sell, man. Be successful at this. Don't give up.